Next on Worcester News Tonight, educators and law enforcement look at the issue of sexual assault on college campuses. Plus, a high school football player prepares for another battle to keep playing football this season. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. Keeping students safe on college campuses. It's the focus of many college and university presidents across the country, and also the focus of a conference today in Worcester. Hundreds gather to discuss topics like sexual assaults and active shooters. Our Rosalind Flaherty reports. I think what we've learned, uh, all of us as, as, a, as a community, is that there are a lot of unknowns uh, that can can happen and become reality. In 2008, the Massachusetts Board of Higher Education conducted a campus safety study in the wake of the Virginia Tech shooting. Now it is working to keep students safe in the future with new recommendations for campus safety and violence prevention. Parents send their kids to campus and they expect them to be safe. A 2016 survey revealed much progress has been made over the last eight years related to campus safety and violence prevention. The best that we can do is to prepare our frontline responders, emergency responders, uh, police officers with the ability uh, to uh, bring safety immediately to a situation. Colleges in Worcester say they have taken the necessary steps to ensure the safety of their students and faculty. College campus police have um, in-depth training in responding to an active shooter. We've trained with the state police in the past. We are a fully armed police department, uh, so we are going to be the first officers in the uh, buildings to try to uh, stop the threat. Colleges say they have also adopted communication techniques. Students have a phone portal and they can send uh, anonymous text message, they can send photographs, immediately goes to dispatch and it gives us a GPS location. We'll send out a notif mass notification through text messages, um, social media. Another key topic is protecting students from sexual assaults. Schools like Assumption College and Quinsigamon Community College say they take this very seriously. We also have a detective uh, position and uh, sexual assault investigators. We have a trained sexual assault investigator and she works very closely with the Title IX investigator, and we do a full investigation. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Now, today's conference comes as state lawmakers work with colleges and other groups on policies and legislation to address the issue of sexual assaults on campus. Our Jennifer Serrate has that story. For the last two years, Senator Michael Moore has been pushing for preventative measures against sexual violence on college campuses. There's been a lot of work put in this. We've tried to protect the rights of the, the victim while at the same time um, making sure that they have the rights for confidentiality, receiving the appropriate services on and off campus. On Wednesday, Senator Moore joined other law enforcement and school officials at a campus safety conference held at the DCU Center. There, a report of the bill was released by the Board of Higher Education. Senator Moore says the bill reinforces support for victims of sexual assault. This legislation puts the control of where the investigation goes into the victim's hands. It, it allows the victim uh, access to confidential services uh, where they're explained what their options are. Louis Soto, a coach at Team Link Training Center in Worcester, says awareness is 90% of the battle in sexual assault cases. Maybe not being by yourself when you should be with other friends that you trust um, to look out for each other, right? So a lot of it is just being aware of your surrounding and what's going on around. Louis says when it comes to the self-defense tactics, education is key. There's a lot more to that. That's not the only thing that we teach. Um, obviously, no one should take advantage of anyone else, regardless of the situation. But unfortunately, you have those predators and that's exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for that opportunity when they can come in. Jennifer Zarate, Worcester News Tonight. A high school football player will continue his battle to play football this season tomorrow when he faces off against the MIAA. Kevin Mensa has a hearing tomorrow with the MIAA board on his appeal to play football for Shepherd Hill. There you see him on the field last week as number three. Mensa was ruled ineligible by the MIAA after transferring from Holy Name over the summer because his form wasn't properly filled out. A judge issued an injunction last week which allowed Mensa to play immediately. Tomorrow's hearing could impact his eligibility for the season. The hearing is closed to the public. The Worcester Library meeting with the public tonight to talk about how to improve the facility. 
The staff is putting together a five year plan for the library. Tonight they took suggestions and input on accessibility, library use and space. One area the library is looking at in its plan is changing the front entrance. Allow us to um, shift some service points around in the library and possibly add new service points so it's a chance to gather information from the public uh, for what kinds of services they would like to see. Another public meeting is scheduled for this Saturday. Worcester man accused of killing his neighbor last month is being held without bail. Jacinto Maldonado pleaded not guilty to the charges in court today. Authorities say the 42 year old shot and killed his neighbor. The district attorney's office says the two got into an argument before the shooting. Despite having the same last name, the two men are not related. A woman accused of driving into a five year old girl and her grandmother in Worcester has been indicted. The DA's office says 33 year old Cassandra McAuliffe is facing several charges, including assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and operating under the influence of drugs. In June, authorities say McAuliffe was chasing her ex boyfriend when she lost control of her vehicle and jumped a curb. She hit 55 year old Doris Chrysostomo and her granddaughter Silvana. Both suffered serious injuries. McAuliffe is being held without bail and will be back in court next month. Sturridge police say three separate fires inside a Walmart yesterday were intentionally set and have named a store worker as a suspect. Police say a Walmart employee identified as Maya Cruz can be seen on surveillance footage fleeing the scene. Investigators say they tried reaching her on her cell phone and she hung up. At this time, a warrant is out for her arrest. Cruz is wanted on several charges, including three counts of burning building contents. Damage from the fire has closed Walmart for the time being. A rollover crash in Auburn caused some traffic backup earlier today. Auburn police tweeting out these photos of a box truck on Route 20 at the intersection of Prospect Street. No one was injured. He's a legendary high school coach who was portrayed in the Disney movie Remember the Titans. And this week he's in Worcester. Our Brittany Schaefer has a look at Herman Boone's appearance today at Worcester State. You don't have to like people, but you do have to respect them. It's a message legendary high school football coach Herman Boone has been delivering for decades. Boone, who was portrayed by Denzel Washington in the Disney film Remember the Titans, spoke at Worcester State University Wednesday. He says the key to uniting his team, made up of black and white students more than 40 years ago, still holds true for Americans today. Once you learn to respect each other, you tend to create trust and that trust tends to become the emotional glue that all communities need to get along better. Members of the Worcester State University football team were in the audience and say they will bring many of Boone's messages back to their own team. So it's, it's only about one heartbeat and trust in the person next to you and as a team that's what it has to be. Find out more about who's on your team. It's not about color, race, background, culture. It's about, you know, what's inside and uh, you know, that's what really matters. Boone's message goes well beyond the football field. Boone says the key to uniting his team is the same key for creating unity today. Hate is coming back into our society. Why is it that people are taking the privilege and opportunity to kill people on the streets of this country and particularly our black people? We're coming into a time where the kind of issues that he dealt with um, back then, you know, are, are still prevalent today, and it's inspirational to hear, you know, somebody have such awesome views about just people and human beings, you know, as they, as it should be. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. And as you saw in Brittany's video, the coach received a standing ovation from the crowd after his speech last year. Boston Marathon survivor Jeff Bowman spoke at Worcester State. The Worcester Police Department receives a grant for anti-gang initiatives. The nearly $330,000 grant will go to a program focused on prevention, intervention, and targeted gang enforcement. The department will then identify 50 high-risk youths ages 12 to 17 in the city's east side neighborhood to participate. The money will also allow the city to hire outreach workers and case managers to connect with the identified youth and create an individual service plan. One of the best views in Worcester of the foliage will be open to the public next month. Mass Live is reporting the Bancroft Tower will be open on Sundays in October from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
The tower will be staffed with volunteers. The historic tower has been in Worcester since the 1900s.